test to make sure we're working. See if everything's going. I'm gonna take his glasses off. Oh, however you feel comfortable. Well, I, I'll just take, well, I'll just leave him on the gift bag. Okay, today is January 14th. January 14th. 1988. 1988. And my name is Joe Todd. And this is an interview with Nelson Glidewell. Glidewell. And is a junior? Uh, there, you say yes, sir? No, no. Are you a junior? No. Okay. Okay, Nelson Glidewell. Senior. Senior. Okay. In Carthage, Missouri. Mm hmm. So, where were you born? Milan, Missouri. M. M I L L A N. Okay. And when's your birthday? June 1st, 1915. 1915. Who was your father? Simon Gladwell. Simon Gladwell. And your mother? Ethel Gladwell. What was her maiden name? Roach. R O A C H. A C H. Okay. <coughs> what type of work your father did? He was a blacksmith. Blacksmith. There in Milan? No, yeah. And he moved down here later where he that was his trade, blacksmith. Mm -hmm. When I was three years old, we came down here. Did you ever help him in the blacksmith shop yeah, when you were? Yeah. What'd you do in the blacksmith shop? What did I do? Yeah. Well, I uh, struck for him, what you mean, like uh, cut steel, you know, I'd use a sledge. Mm -hmm. That's when I was a kid, of course. I was just big enough to swing, swing a sledge. And I'd cut steel for him while he was getting old with the uh, cutting hammer, and I'd hit, hit the top of the cutting hammer and cut the steel with it. What were you working on in those years, mainly, in the, back, in the blacksmith shop? Oh, mainly they worked on uh, like turning plows. Back then, it's before the tractor came out, you know, very strong. Didn't have too many tractors around that, mm -hmm. then. And uh, they uh, usually was on just regular turn, move board turning plow, mm -hmm. single plow, and cultivator. Mm -hmm. And what they call the double shovel. That's cultivator. Yeah. But it's not, they don't have wheels on it. Mm -hmm. The old cultivator had two wheels on it, just rode it. But that was the, and wagons, the repaired wagons, and all that farm yeah. equipment from that day. Okay. He was already on it? Yeah. Uh, oh, the white valve. have to do the white valve so you don't have green skin. The <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, did you go to school here in Carthage? Yeah, I went, I went to school here to the... I think I left here, I went, I was in seventh, sixth grade. Mm -hmm. We left here and then came back. Went to, up here to Boston, Missouri. My dad had a, opened a shop up there. Of course, that's all farm community at that mm -hmm. time. Well, it still is. And of course, Boston, I don't think there's much of it left there now. I think it's just a wide place in the road. I haven't been up there for quite a while. Mm -hmm. See what's over there. Did you go through high school? Here I didn't go through, I didn't go to high school. Mm -hmm. Like I was on a, farm east of Mount Vernon up there at, when I graduated out of the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, no tr didn't have any any way to get to school, high school, see? Mm -hmm. So I lost out on that. Yeah. Eighth grade's all I got. What cross I have the equipment. The high school I got in the service. Yeah, a GED. Yeah. yeah. But I don't have any uh, uh, school, state yeah. school. Okay. What crops were you raising on the farm by Mount Vernon? Well, they raised uh, a lot of strawberries at that time. They raised corn, and they had what they called for winter seed. Was they raised quite a bit of cane hay at that time because to take care of the uh, you know the roughage. And uh, that was corn and, and wheat, and that, and, that, and oats. That was and and they had raised quite a, quite a bit of, uh, of soybean. Mm -hmm. And what were your duties there on the farm? What did you do? Oh, I just, uh, see my dad, he worked and I just took care of, we just had a little uh, 20 acres and we just lived on it. Well, we really wasn't farmers, we just, we lived on this 20 acres, you know. My dad, he had a shop over in Chesapeake, Missouri, at that, that was later. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, when I did the, I just took care of the milk cows and, and 
take the chicken and cut the wood. And <laughs> you know how that is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when did you decide to go in the Navy? Well, see, I, I was in the Army first. Then I got out of the Army in 36, or 39. Mm -hmm. Got out of the army in '39. Okay, what, when did you join the army? The army. I was a, a, a what you'd say was a, a just a regular uh, s soldier or a first class, mm -hmm. you know. And when did you join? Trooper, trooper what they call trooper back then. Yeah. We rode horses back then. Okay. What year did you join? Uh, 1936. 1936. Here in Carthage? Mm, no, I uh, see. Where did I join the army? Springfield, I believe. Springfield. Springfield. And where'd you go for your basic training? Uh, we didn't have any basic training. In them days, they shipped us straight to the uh, Fort Riley, Kansas. That's where, I went, that's where you went in and took your recruit or your basic right there. Mm -hmm. So were you in the cavalry at that time? Cavalry. Mm -hmm. What'd you do at Fort Riley? Well, uh, the, the, we just uh, drilled, mo uh, you know, mostly. That's most just regular soldier mm -hmm. drilling and marching and. Mm -hmm. and uh, Learning the techniques of uh, uh, how to fire a machine gun and, and a 30 old six is what they had then. Mm -hmm. We called them 30 calibers, but just you know, 30 caliber rifle and 45 pistol. What machine gun did you have at that time? Browning. Browning. Uh, B A R. B A R. Mm -hmm. Well, that was that was a B A R machine gun, but the, uh, the I can't remember what. The name of the, the, I was thinking that the machine guns were Browning machine guns, you know, regular tripod machine guns. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that was what they were. Now, I, that's the best I can remember. Mm -hmm. it's for, I think they were, in the water, they were water cooled and air cooled too. They had mm -hmm. both types. What did you have to do to take care of your horse? What? Oh, well, you had to, you groomed them, and just you know, after you rode them, you know, before you, before you rode them, you groomed them too, you know. Keep, they get any burrs off their back so the saddle wouldn't mm -hmm. cause the saddle sore, you know. And then you, uh, then you just, you, uh, well, they took better, they done everything to a horse that then, by, as far as cleaning and, and pampering them, was, uh, they probably took better care of them than they did the soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> like one old sergeant said, we can get all the soldiers we want, but these horses cost us money. <laughs> And you had to take care of your own tack? Oh, yeah, you took care of your own saddle, soaked your own equipment, you know, kept mm -hmm. it soft and pliable. Mm -hmm. You had to take care of all your own equipment. Mm -hmm. um, why did you join the Army as opposed to the Navy at that time? Well, I tried to get in the Navy at that time. Mm -hmm. And they turned me down for an overbite. That's how how particular they was to get in, you know. they, they A lot of people want me in bad times then. Mm -hmm. It was during Depression. And a lot of the young fellas didn't just didn't have anything to do, you know. Yeah. And so they'd join the Army, Navy, and Marine, and to just have something to do, mm -hmm. some, some work to do. You know. hmm. Back then, jobs were hard to find for young men. Yeah. Um, what different types of drill did you have on horseback? Did like you have saber drill? Mounted or? drill, no saber. See, that that passed. Okay. We had the forty-five pistol charge. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing they ever charged with. Then we had, really, they had a, we rode around a, uh, uh, the pistol range on mm -hmm. horseback, and they'd pop up targets, you know, and you, and you made, uh, I qualified and all that, but I made expert on the rifle, not, you know, mm -hmm. uh, prone, setting, and and standing, but uh, I, I just qualified with that 45 pistol. There's a lot mm -hmm. of different shooting at it. <laughs> yeah. Got a lot, of, a lot more easier to make a miss, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me about uh, at Fort Riley about your meals. The meals? Oh, they fed us great. We had good meals there. I mean, they had uh, they had uh, first class cooks. They were taught went to Bakes cooking beggar schools, you know. And they come out and they were good. They were good. We had good meals. We had mm -hmm. about anything. We had just about anything you can think about. Thank now, were you living in the old in the old post, the old stone barracks? Yeah, the old stone barracks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many soldiers at Fort Riley at that time? Oh my, that was a, I wouldn't know how many soldiers they had there. That was a, uh, they had the field artillery and uh, cavalry, 
And they had Ninth Cavalry there that was covered. Mm -hmm. They were segregated in that day. They didn't didn't uh, uh, drill with us or yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. hmm. that, that's before they were desegregated. Yeah. Okay. And were you aware of the Japanese invasion of Manchuria in '36? Uh, yeah, vaguely. Yeah, just just you know it was going on. You don't know how you do you. Hear it just like if things yeah. happen today, like over in Israel. Yeah. You just hear it and you just think, have your own thoughts about it. You think nobody you're... really got excited about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And you left the army in forty. I left the army in thirty nine. In thirty nine. Mm -hmm. I joined the navy in forty. Okay. <laughs> I went back and tried the navy again. See, I, um, I wanted to, I, I wanted the navy first, you know, mm -hmm. but oh, I. Oh, go ahead. But I couldn't get. They turned me down on that overbite, yeah. and I. <laughs> the next time I went through, they didn't even mention an overbite. <laughs> <laughs> were you aware of the rise of Hitler? Oh yes, yeah. Did you did you think that we're going to go to war? Yes, well, I thought that, uh, we all thought eventually it'd run into a full scale war. You know the way he was uh, overpowering them smaller countries over there. You know. Did you war. think with Germany or Japan? Huh? With Germany or Japan? With Germany. Some, Germany. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't have didn't think about Japan at that time. Mm -hmm. It was just Germany. Mm -hmm. See they. It, uh, they, I uh, see, it was in 39, wasn't it, when they started their yeah. ragging over there, the way I remember it. Yeah, September 39 is when Germany and Russia invaded yeah. Poland. Both yeah. of them invaded Poland. Yeah. But you never hear about the Russian invasion No, you don't now. hear about it. <laughs> Just the Germans. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so what did you do in that short period between the Army and the Navy? Yeah. Oh, I uh, got out and I thought, well, I'll, get, I'll, I'll make a run around here and see if I can find any uh, work that's worth fooling with, you know. And I got a job in a bar shoving beer, you know, a bartender. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found pretty soon, I found that uh, handling them drunk, I couldn't hack that. <laughs> was that was that here in Crossy? No, that was in Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan. I went up there. I was going up to work in the automobile. I had my sister and brother-in-law lived up there, and I had some more folks up there, you know, Ken. And uh, so I had, I didn't, I felt at home up there. So I, did, I, but, but I couldn't get on. The, uh, in the automotive at that time because they were filled up and all yeah. turned away every day. And uh, then I went and got this job at this bar, but I didn't like it kind of work, so mm -hmm. I got out of that and then I come back home. And uh, then I decided, well, I, this, uh, I'm just going to be able to take another crack at the Navy. <laughs> so I, uh, that's when I went. My dad was in a, working for the state at that time. Mm -hmm. He was blacksmith for the state up here at La Cleve, Missouri, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I went up there to visit with them, stayed with them a little while, and then I went on up to uh, Perchville and joined the Navy up there, mm -hmm. Perchville, and they sent me to... Can we turn the fan off? Oh, yeah. No, that's... Yeah. Well, that'll go off. Did you have to go through boot camp in the Navy? I went, uh, for, uh, I went through boot camp, they sent me to the Great Lakes Naval Air Training Station at uh, uh, up the other side of it. Uh, uh, Chicago. Yeah. Was there any comparison between your service at Fort Riley and Navy boot camp? Oh yeah, the Navy was much more interesting. You was moving around different places, you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. it, 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 that's why I liked it. Liked it because we moved around a little, you know, mm -hmm. different town. Was there talk of the war oh, in Europe? Oh, huh? Was there talk of the war in Europe? Oh yes, yes, it was. It was always speculating. You know, yeah. What was going to happen next? <laughs> Tell me about your boot camp at Great Lakes. At Great Lakes? Yeah. Well, see, I, well, in the Army, I went, they put me in charge of, tra of, uh, of uh, drilling these uh, new recruits, you know, or the mm -hmm. boots they call them, you know, in the Navy. And uh, so I, because I'd had, I'd had three years of service in the Army, so I knew how to drill. Mm -hmm. And so they had me drilling, they put me in uh, charge of drilling these boys that didn't know how, you know, and to help, you know, not all of it, just to help. And uh, so I did, I, that's what I did. I, I helped train them boys to march and, and how to handle their arms, uh, drill, you know, arm drill. And uh, that's, that was my, that's what I did when I was there. So I, uh, see, we just stayed there nine weeks uh, training. And they shipped us on up to uh, 
the uh, uh, in Washington, uh, what's that? Uh, huh. I was just thinking, uh, oh, Bremerton, Washington. That's where I caught the ship. Oh, okay. At Bremerton. So, uh, were you ships uh, sent up there straight after boot camp? Mm hmm. Oh, yes, went directly to, to catch the ship. It was in dry dock. Okay. Up that uh, they were. Did you Bremerton. did you re request the Oklahoma? No, I, they just they uh, they didn't give you any cho choice. You, they put you where they wanted you. Mm -hmm. and and so, did you have any specific training in boot camp to be a signal man? No, no, you do that if you get aboard the ship. Mm -hmm. you, that's where you you see you yeah. strike for each one of these mm -hmm. uh, rates that you want to. If you want to be a, a a gunner or a, or a deck hand or. A, Signalman or mm -hmm. radioman or, or artist or carpenter or whatever the, 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 the head mm -hmm. to offer. Well, you struck for that if you like, picked ones you like and then strike for it. Yeah. What's called striking is, is you, you start training for it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what, and then if you, when you get your training in, well, you'll either go to first, you usually go to first class, you go seaman second when you first go in. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as you, your drill boot camp, so you go soon in second, and then first class, and then third class, second class, baby, or first class, and chief in that day. Mm -hmm. How do you travel from uh, Great Lakes to Bremerton? Yeah, by train. By train? Mm -hmm. um, was it a troop train or a civilian train? It was a civilian train. Civilian train. But we were just, you know, there wasn't enough of us was going up there to just yeah. have one train. When you first saw the Oklahoma, what'd you think? Well, I was the biggest ship. Well, I never knew anything about ships or anything else, you know, being a land lover, you know, at the time. I'd never been around the Navy or anything. And of course, that that Oklahoma looked like a, a floating uh, island out there, you know, <laughs> to me. And uh, kind of, I was woo struck with that. But I, uh, I really, um, I really liked my tour on there. I had, I enjoyed it really. Where were your quarters on the ship? I was on the second deck, aft. You know, when you say second deck, that's the that... deck below the main deck. Okay. And you say you were aft. Describe. That, that, that's when I was on the end in, in the. Uh, uh, I was on the third deck when I was in signalman. They okay. moved you from yeah. a, from a seaman to to a third class or I mean, to a uh, to a signalman. I, you, they moved me down on the third deck. And I swear, my that's where this boy was. You. Talking about. Yeah. Most of the boys down there in my division that got killed that day, um, on account of that, that's where they went through. That third hit about that third deck, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of concussion and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. There wasn't very many that was down there got out. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Copeland said he was probably the last one to get off the ship. No. Because he said when he came out, the ship was at the right angle and was still going down. Yeah. Well, you know, I never seen anybody get off after I did. Mm -hmm. See, I was down there in the Second deck and after battle bags, uh, I went down to Man Nam after the they gave us the word the manner of the battle station, and I went down there and they wasn't a soul showed up. I was the only man down there in the signal division, and the, uh, that was while you're under fire, you're going down there so you can uh, work without being shot so easy, you know, or exploded. Yeah, you run your flag hoist up from the third deck up. Okay, before we get into that. Describe your quarters on the ship. Well, they were just, we had bunks. We were lucky to have bunks. They just started putting bunks in. They usually slept in uh, in hammocks. You know them hammocks? You never slept in one, you, you don't know what you're missing. Because <laughs> you can fall out of them awful easy if you don't learn how to sleep in them. <laughs> so you get a few bunks till you learn how to, to sleep in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, they were just, just starting to, Put bunks in long bulkheads. Now were they slung? They stacked okay. three of three, one, uh, three of, all along on each side of each compartment. Hmm. Did they fold up in the daytime? Yeah, I fold them up in the daytime. Mm -hmm. They just push them up against the wall, you know. And how many bunks in each compartment? Ooh, let's see. Yeah, let's see. They were down there. I'd say I'd just taken a rough guess. Now it's been so long, I can't remember. Seemed to me like we had. Uh, Threes of three, that'd be nine. Um, nine, nine is 18. That'd be about 18 bunks on both sides. Three, uh, three tiers, three, uh, nine on 
on the starboard and nine on the port. Yeah. Okay. And how big's your locker? Oh, it's just like a uh, locker that you have to wire or something like that. That's about the size of your locker. Yeah. What did you have in your locker? Oh, you kept your uh, all your your clothes in there, your socks and your shorts and your and your uniform. And uh, of course, Navy back in them days, they they uh, uh, didn't have too many. You just had about three uniforms of each kind, so it wasn't that was plenty of room for to put them in. You know, either wouldn't had too much shoes, and, and you kept all your private stuff in there, like your. If you had money or pictures or whatever you had, that was your that was your lockup to keep your private stuff. Okay. What about your meals? Where'd you take your meals on the ship? Well, we they had casemates. We eat in casemates, like you know, wherever they, just wherever you your division eat. Well, that's they had a place designated, but we ate in a ours was in a casemate. Now what's well, casemate? That's in cases of gun, okay. a five inch gun. Or six inch, That's whatever. where they have the steel plates that come out that shatter top? Yeah, huh? okay. they come out kind of like that. You're kind of built out like that. And they have gun shields in there to put on to keep, in bad storm, to keep the water from going into the gun compartment. Uh, what deck are the, those casemates on? Well, oh, they're on a superstructure. Okay, they're on a superstructure. Superstructure. They're okay. not on the, the decks. Now, your your main guns are on the They run in bar bits down, down through. There's... There's three and uh, uh, three guns in each uh, in the front. There'd be six guns on the back. That'd be 14 inches mm -hmm. and, th and six on the front. So or was there two in that one? Yeah. No, I think that I thought maybe been ten guns and then 14 inch guns. Yeah, Mr. Goodwin said they had three and then two. Yeah, three and two. Yeah, I started to say three and three, but it's three and two after yeah. I get to think. Mm -hmm. Uh, See, I wasn't in. I, I, I was in. I worked on gun. Uh, I was a powder hoister. Mm. On to shoot the powder up to the guns, you know. Yeah. On a on a hoist. You kept, and that's what was my job. To, uh, when I went to when I was in the deck force. Yeah. Have you got time? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so the casemates are on the superstructure. Uh huh. Okay. Now, how high is that off the main deck? Well, that's about two decks. If you'd be talking in decks, that'd be about, that'd be a bit one deck up. Okay. See, from the back, main deck. The main deck goes through, and then the superstructure starts from the main deck and goes up to the signal bridge and the, and on up to the uh, wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. You know where the captain, where they steer the ship. Mm -hmm. Quartermaster stays around in there too. How were the officers in the Oklahoma? Were they pretty good? Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, they as good as you. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't have any trouble with. Uh, I never disliked any of the officers that I run across. Did you ever meet Captain was it Captain Foy? Was that his Foy. Name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you know him? Oh yeah. What was he like? Well, I just knew him. Yeah. You don't never get a question. Yeah. <laughs> you just know who he is and how and, mm -hmm. and about him. Uh, he was a nice fellow. One of the nicest. Uh, he was the oldest captain in the Navy at that time. Yeah. The oldest captain in the Navy. And he was a dandy. He was good. He knew he'd been through old mill. He knew how to treat men. And Did he survive the attack? Uh, he wasn't on. He was relieved. Uh, see, we. He got relieved. Uh, uh, see, we was following the flagship, which was Pennsylvania at the time, was out maneuvering. And we was in line coming behind them and they give us the the wrong turn i was on happen to be on watch at night signal bridge and they give us a nine turn that's a 90 degree turn mm -hmm. and we and then they give you the when they then they'll give you execute which is a long matter of the light we was taking it by by uh the light signal light you know and taking the message and when they give us when they gave us uh turn nine and gave us to to turn you know well we started turning well the pennsylvania turned right in front of us and got in when we, we hit the back the took their slop chute off <laughs> beside the ship and so they are uh, i don't know whether that was they relieved him for that or not see we run into a, a one right after we got aboard 
the ship in uh, Bremerton, we was going down the, uh, the for our maiden run right after we come out of the dry dock to see how she worked and everything. Why, we uh, was going down the, uh, the uh, bay there, the sound, and uh, it was foggy, you couldn't see your hand in front of you hardly. And of course we had to blow on the, the fog whistle and bring in the bell, you know. That's what was, that was what you're supposed to do during the fog. And uh, so there's a tug pulling some uh, box cars across, and they were cut right across in front of our bow. Of course, we, when we got up to where you could see they were there, it was too late. Yeah. So we rammed that, that bow, uh, that uh, barge, knocked box cars off in the water. And uh, I was uh, cleaning the deck on the, on the main deck aft. And uh, whenever they throw her full reverse, you know, reverse the motors, well, they just, I just flowed me on my face <laughs> when you're not looking for it to do that. Yeah. And, of course, but it, we, you know, we hit them and we bent our stem and we had to go back into dry dock again. <laughs> now, what's the stem? That might have been, they relieved him. Then after that second deal that we had out in, when we was in maneuvering out in the Pacific and hit the slop chute on, on the, on the Pennsylvania, that was the flagship, mm -hmm. and where the Madamons were at. They're never wrong. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I happen to know that they gave us, uh, we executed right on their uh, timing. And they had given you a nine turn? Nine, the 90 degree turns. Yeah. And what were they supposed to give you? And they didn't turn. We turned right into them. Yeah. When, well, they gave us, when they gave us that, we, we, they, uh, they, we executed mm -hmm. the turn. Whenever they give us the ex to execute, well, we turned, and when we did, we turned right in the side, right into the side of the Pennsylvania, knocked her slop shoes off on our deck, took it right off. It landed on the on the forecast, for forecastle. <laughs> what turn should they have given you? That's what they. That's what. That's the way they should have. But they didn't turn. We turned, and they didn't. Oh, okay. See, they were supposed to turn with us. See, that make us all turn at the same time. Any idea why they didn't turn? Never know. But they didn't give us, they, they said we turned, it was our fault, we, we hit them. Like you said, the Admiral's never wrong. Never wrong. <laughs> but I happen to know, they didn't never, they never questioned any of the, the of us, which they should have. But they, they relieved Foy? But Foy was relieved after that, and I always thought that maybe that was why, them yeah. two accidents, and he was the, being the oldest mm -hmm. captain in the Navy at that time. Who, who had placed him? Richardson, I think, was the one that replaced him. It was named Richardson, if I remember right now. I'm pretty sure that's right. Mm -hmm. okay. um, what was your average day in the Oklahoma? Well, you run uh, in watches, uh, four-hour watches, see, when you're on there. You roll on four and all four, or whatever the, whatever they designate that day's work will be. You mm -hmm. could be, if it was an emergency, you could be on 24 hours for a second there. But four hour shifts was usually the, he was on for and off for us. Mm -hmm. That's the way it worked. Now, as a signalman, what were your duties? Well, we uh, send messages and receive by seven, four, and light. Mm -hmm. um, at night, do you use a light? Light. Okay. Now, I've seen some photographs. You use it in the daytime, too. You do? Oh, yeah. You can use it both okay. days, day or night. And you can see, and signal, semaphore, they use that for radio silence. Mm -hmm. When they can't use the radios like in wartime, you don't want the enemy to know you're there. And they'll pick up your radio signal if you put one out. So they use they use this signaling uh, where there's no yep. way they can pick up our... Just a second, this thing. So the semaphore is used in radio silence. Uh-huh. And... What type of training did you have to be a signal man on the Oklahoma? What kind of what? Training did you have to Well, you had to go to school. Mm -hmm. You know, you trained, you went to school. Went to learned school to, on the Oklahoma? Uh-huh. Right on the Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. you, and, uh, and you learned the, the uh, semaphore and light. That's, that, it's light by, by Morse code, you know. Okay. Light, same way. Uh, that semaphore, is it more or less an international language? Yeah. Or? It's, it's not, yeah. So it, it, everybody, anybody. They all have it, so there's no. So uh, Japanese or Russian or Chinese, yeah. they could see it. And yeah, they could. 
Well, now, see, we, we went by code. They, they couldn't read our code if we didn't want them to read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had, it, if it went out in code, if it was something really important, why well, they just natural. But if it was something important, it was sent in code. So they couldn't pick it up. Okay. Now, you mentioned that when the ship was attacked, that you were downstairs running the... No, I was up on the bridge you when it started. On the bridge. Uh -huh. Okay. I was on the bridge cutting a, a... Well, see, I was supposed to go and have the Liberty at 8 o'clock that day to go take the first Liberty boat over to shore. And uh, the uh, this one of my friends, I cut hair on the side, you know, while I was in there, on just for our division. I wasn't a ship's barber. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, he wanted me to cut his hair, so I cut it up on the bridge. I went over on the bridge to cut it. And we were sitting, I was cutting his hair up there when they dropped the first bomb over there on okay. Fort Allen. Before we get into that again, um, what did you do for recreation on the Oklahoma? Oh, uh, at, at that time, there wasn't a whole lot of recreation on there. Once in a while when we were in Port, they'd have a show on the stern. You know, the hula girls would come born and give mm -hmm. us a show, you know. And, uh, but not very often. We didn't have much recreation in that line. Yeah. We just made our own recreation, like playing cards or reading mm -hmm. or whatever you could do to, uh, to amuse yourself. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned when you hit those barges, you bent the stem. Yeah. Well, on, what's the stem? That's the stem is what comes out on the, on the uh, well, uh, on your bow, see? Yeah. And point off your bow. Well, they bent this where okay. the plates all come around yeah. hook on the stem. It's framework. So you had to repair that? Yeah, they had to go back in and repair that, straighten that up. <laughs> okay. No, I, we'd been in there 30 days, and then we went in about another 30 to get that. So thing. when you went on the ship, did you go to Hawaii? Yeah, yeah. I went, we went to Hawaii. Okay. Right, right over to Hawaii. What do you think of Hawaii? Well, I'd say that's the best uh, climate I ever run into. Mm -hmm. I mean, I liked it over there, mm -hmm. but it, it's too small. I mean, I've been used to the United States and that little island over it gets pretty close, yeah. you know, you get kind of rock happy over there if you stay very long. What type of inspectors did you have on the ship? Uh, we had qu uh, just quarters of the morning, you know, mm -hmm. first thing. Then we'd have uh, foot lockers ever so periodically to see if you was keeping your locker straightened up, you know, and you wasn't uh, uh, putting a lot of stuff in you wasn't supposed to have, you know, like could be liquor or anything, you know, to keep you from, from getting, checking up on you all. And that's, that was periodically. Okay. Well, did you, have, did you have any idea at all of the Japanese buildup? Yeah, well, see, we were on the alert out there. Uh, we knew that we were uh, that the Japanese was having trouble with them, but then we didn't have any idea they would, it was that close to war. You know. They uh, see their envoy the the, 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 uh, the day before that they hit us on December seventh to be on the sixth, but went to Washington was going to Washington to parley, come through there and stop the Japanese envoy to, to Washington, and so I, I think that was done to throw us off. From, yeah. And then they came in the next morning, see, and hit us at 7, what, 45, what was it, 7 o'clock? just right before 8 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, what'd you do on December 6th? Uh, December 6th? That's Saturday. Well, we just had come into, uh, if I remember right, we just had came into uh, port on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Lined up there. That's how they had that spy work over there was great for the Japs. They, you know, that's, there's about a, well, I don't know what percentage of Japanese over there anyway. And now I think it's even worse than that. Yeah. They're trying. I think they're taking over mm -hmm. all the businesses and everything over there. Um, did you go on Liberty on December sixth? No. See, De December seventh is when I was supposed to go. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. so that was on Sunday. Yeah. So what'd you do Saturday? The sixth. Uh, Saturday? Well, we just did the uh, ordinary, you know, cleaning up and keeping the ship in shape. Mm -hmm. and just ordinary work day. Uh, now the semaphores. What do you store the semaphores on the ship? What do you what? What do you store the semaphores? Oh, well, they have a, they, see, the semaphore flags, mm -hmm. they have a round tube that you just stick them down in there and, and the flag. Then they have a flag bag that uh, takes care of the, the pennants and the, and the mm -hmm. you know, uh, the signal flags. I was going to ask, you ever see the silver service on the ship? 
The what? The silver service the captain used. No, and it was up front. Yeah. No, he's up in the photo. Mm -hmm. I never was up in there. Ever hear what when he used that service? What he used it for? Never. I no, didn't know a thing about it. That was all officers' country. We never okay. wasn't allowed up there in the first yeah, place. Yeah, but that was also taken off the ship in 1940. Oh, it was. Yeah, it was put in storage at Bremerton. Oh, I well, guess that's when, when we come out of there. Yeah. yeah. Because, Why is that? Uh, they said the ship went strip ship. Oh. All unnecessary items were taken off. Was taken off. I guess to prepare. They must have been new more than we did, then. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, we had the silver service on display in Oklahoma City. Well, and, I didn't. See, yeah. I didn't. That's news to me. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. It was given to us in '47 or '48. Fifty some pieces of huge silver. French gold. Yeah. Silver. Sterling silver. Oh, yeah. This big French bowl. Never seen it. Yeah. Were you in Oklahoma City in '76? Seventy-six. Was well, that was it? Was that was that a meeting? Or yeah, that was a reunion for the reunion association. No, I didn't make that. One. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can't remember even what year it was. Now, ain't that? So I can't remember what year it was. We went to uh, out in Reno, Nevada. That's the last one I was to. Yeah. And then my wife went out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. What time did you get up on December seventh? Well, let's see. Now, I think it, we got up at, uh, I think it's 5.45, if I remember right. And what'd you do? On December 7th? Yeah, when you first Like I say, I, that was my liberty day, and so I was getting ready to go on liberty until this friend of mine wanted me to cut his hair before he went ashore. He had gone... Why'd you go up on the bridge? Well, to get away from... See, I wasn't supposed to... Uh, I was doing what's called bootlegging haircuts. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to cut anybody's hair. I was supposed to go to the ship's barber shop. And uh, so I'd cut their hair. Uh, my division officer kept them off my back, see, all the time, because uh, the master at arms would check on you if you was cutting hair. Uh, he'd put you on report. So he put me on report, caught me, and put me on report. Of course, went to the division officer first, his report. And the division officer just threw it in the trash can, you know. He kind of finally got to the message that he, the division owner told me to steer clear of him if I could, you know, no. so that's the reason I was up on the bridge. What was his name, your division officer? You know, I can't remember what his name was anymore. He's, it's, it's, I just can't remember his name. It slipped my mind. And what division were you in on the ship? I was on C Division. C Division. Mm -hmm. That's he's, signal he's, division. Like he's a pretty good guy. Huh? He yeah. and him? Yeah. He was a nice fellow. That's funny, I can't remember his name. I've tried to remember his name two or three times and I've never seen anything wrote and writing since I left there that had his name on it. Mm -hmm. I, I knew it well enough, but it just slipped my mind. Yeah. I can't even remember. Uh, Ken Worthy was the commander, and Foy was the captain, and uh, <laughs> I can't remember what my division officer's name. That seems odd, but that's, that slipped my mind. Okay, now when you were up cutting this, the man's hair, how high up were you? We was, well, let's see. That would be a deck above the a deck above the casemates. So that'd be on three decks up on that superstructure. Superstructure. We out in the open. Yeah. See, so you were all the way around. You had to keep watch mm -hmm. for signals. Is there? I can show you where it's at. On. I got a yeah. picture in here. If you oh, you do? Yeah. yeah. Uh, come in here, and I'll show you. Uh, I went looking for glass in there. I'll show you. Now you see right here is a signal break. Okay, These, can we do it around this one? Oh, okay. Now right 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 here is a signal bridge. Mm -hmm. Right in here, see? That's the signal bridge. And here's your the uh, pilot for you to steer the ship. See that is three and two of them guns. Um, they used to call conning towers on mm -hmm. these tripods. Yeah. That's where your your fire control is up in these fire controls. Had two airplanes. So where were you when you're cutting hair? I was right, right up here. Right there. Yeah, right in here. Okay. Can you point out about where your quarters were on the ship? Oh, the quarters? Well, I was about, about right in, about right in here, mm -hmm. down underwater. 
See, that's 100 and they drew, I think it drew 106 feet underneath the water. Which side of the Japanese hit? This side or the other side? They hit, they hit the uh, port side. Port side. Okay. No, that, that's the, this is the best picture I've ever been able to get of the Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. This is just like she looked the day I remember. Yeah, okay. That's a good picture. That's a good picture. Yeah. You okay. You through this? What was the man's name? His hair. What was his name that you were cutting? Stapleton. Stapleton. So that's, were, that's the way I remember it. That's who I remember it being. So you were cutting his hair. And tell me what happened. Well, uh, well, I was cutting his hair there, and we were just shooting the breeze like, you know, nothing. We didn't have any... Wasn't under any pressure or anything, just like sitting here talking to you. And uh, we, all at once there's a big explosion over on Ford Island. It dropped a, a bomb on a hangar over there, you know. And uh, so we thought, well, my goodness, what in the world what was going on? And we thought, and then we just thought, well, they dropped, I told, asked, we was talking to one another. I said, I think that they dropped, somebody dropped one of them. Uh, dropped a bomb by mistake. And about that time, another aircraft came in, a dive bomber, peeled off and dropped another bomb over there. And then it flew right across the top of our ship, right over top, right over our ship. And we've seen this rising sun on the fuselage. Well, we couldn't believe that that, what, that it was Jap. You know, we looked, we'd seen, but we couldn't believe it, you know, that it would be a Japanese attack. And so, of course, Right away after that, I, we got the message, you know, figured, trying to figure that out was Jeff being attacked. And it took a while for the the uh, officer of the deck to give us to pass the word to man the battle stations, you know. Well, by the time he got convinced that we were really being attacked, well, see, we had no, no notice or anything to tell us, or, or it was just out of the blue. And. Uh, so you can't blame the, the officer. Uh, but uh, they passed the, the word while we didn't. Uh, we stopped right over in the middle of there. <laughs> he just peeled up his, his ears there, you know, and just sticking out, looked like an uh, uh, old farm boy that had never been down. And uh, so anyway, uh, we they passed the battle station, passed the word from the manor battle station. So. I took off from, to, from my battle station. I don't know where he went. I don't know what his station was. But anyway, I went headed down to the third deck after battle bags. And uh, what's just, a battle bag? That's where you you used to, uh, during uh, battle. You're down there where they you, you're protected, some, so you can send up uh, signals and stuff from down there. Yeah, there. How do you send signals down below? Uh, up with that, with a lanyard on uh, with uh, flags, uh, signal flags. They, they mean different, uh, flags mean different things, you know. They can make a code out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have flags and pennants and that's what they, but you don't, you have to understand that to <coughs> be hard to tell you. Yeah. How long did it take to get from the superstructure down to? Oh, it didn't take me over uh, a minute, two minutes at the most, because I was traveling full time, full speed. But just as I hit the bottom of the deck, you know, the third, the second deck, coming down the ladder on the store port side, well, they hit, and that they hit us with the first torpedo. And uh, the torpedo planes coming in on us, and uh, they hit us with that first torpedo, went off on the third deck. And I was on the second deck, so it went off right below me. It was right about hit, just pretty close to where I was at. What did that sound like? Oh my, that, it's just pressure. It's, it's a pressure that it, you should feel more of a pressure and a, um, just something, you know, just like that. I mean, you just, and of course the deck below me buckled. Didn't come through. The explosion didn't come through the deck. They had to kill me, I would have never got out of there. But uh, as it did, it flattened me out, you know. And kind of, I, I must just been 
momentarily out because when I come, when my head cleared up, where I was, I got right up and went on over to the battle station. But I got a, a shock out of that. You know, it's a nerve deal. What's called the nerves. And uh, how close to the bulkhead were you? Oh, I was right against the bulkhead, coming down the ladder, and it goes down into the second deck. Now, where's the water line? The water line? Well, yeah. you can you can see the water line just well. It's that's where your water line comes up on your on your. You know, is uh, on second deck or you above or below water line? Uh, second deck is above a uh, water line. And third about deck? ten foot above water yeah. line. So the torpedo hit hit below the water below line. line. Yeah. So it hit about the third deck. So it hit yeah. it hit oh, I'd say ten feet below the water. How thick is that deck that protected you from the explosion? Well, as uh, uh, they're they're steel plating plates, mm -hmm. uh, the deck is steel plate. I'd say that thick. Yeah, quarter half inch thick. Yeah, but it's just lucky that of course the paint, the paint on the bulkheads, the pressure and the you know and the the paint just flew through the air like the, off the bulkheads, just flew right through the air like glass, you know, just and if it hits you, just cuts you, you know. And uh, and uh, of course it didn't cut deep, but you know how to know what I mean. It just popped off the deck and flew through the air, you know. So paint when, work. When you woke up, what'd you do then? Well, I went on to my battle station. Mm -hmm. Got over there and stood there and stayed there and looked around, trying to figure out what to do next. They knocked out the, the communication. I couldn't get any communication down there. Tell me what to do next. You know, what? Give me any orders. So then I. Uh, it was the ship listing at this time? Oh yeah, I started to list after that first hit. Hit us for the hit us for the second. Then they hit us again after a while I was over there, see, with to the second torpedo. And uh, and then I, I stood there and waited and then I, I looked around and I thought, well ain't nobody coming around, so I walked up a little bit and looked down and the and the water was running through the portholes on the coming through the portholes, just gushing through the portholes on the on the port side. And so I thought, well, good grief, we're sinking, sure enough, you know. And uh, so I, cut, I looked up, because in the meantime, they brought some wounded. The sick bay was right there close to where my station was. And they brought a bunch of these wounded in, or several wounded. That's the only place they had to go. They didn't get too many of them because they didn't have time. But what they did get, they brought up there to sick bay and laid them down, you know. And so whenever I, uh, I thought, well, I'm gonna watch that hole up there, because the Australia would shoot me if I went off left my boat in my station, you know. All right, that's what they told us what they'd do if we left. But anyway, I stayed there until water was about knee deep down this way, and I was listing down this way, about 45 degrees. And so I kept my eyes on that up there. I thought I'll stay as long as I can, but when, when, I, when I leave, I'm gonna, when, as long as I can see light through that portal, I can get out. So I waited, and then when I seen some Two of them getting ready to dog it down, you know, to pull the dogs out. And I don't know why, but that was their job. Now, what, what do you mean, pull the dogs out? But to, to let the hatch down to close it up, watertight. Try to save the ship from sinking, but that was it was already sinking. And I don't know why they did it. It's just their job, and they were just doing their job. And uh, so I thought, well, here I go. So I just shut up that ladder, and just as I got out, they dropped they dropped the hatch down. See? Well, all them boys down there was laying around down there, was wounded, you know, or what there was down there. The, by the sick bay, while well, they were all rounded, you know, they didn't have a chance to get out. And uh, I was the last out of there, the last one that could get out. Because yeah. I couldn't anybody got out after me because they were, the hatch had been closed. So were you up on the main deck? I was on the main, second main deck. Okay, now how far had the ship listed at that time? Forty-five. Forty-five I like years. that. When I stepped out, they hit us for that second time when I stepped out on, from the the uh, combing, over the combing and onto the main deck. Where I, they hit us with that second torpedo and it knocked me off my feet and I went sliding down the, the deck, you know. And I thought, I don't want to go off on this side because the ship's turning that way. It'll, it might suck me under, you know. So I clumbed back up and got hold of the lifeline on the, on the, the, uh, the, the ship, or the lifeline, that's the rail that runs around yeah. there. And, uh, Got a hold of it and was hanging on there trying to figure out what to do next. And then a, a dang plane made a couple of runs at us with a machine gun and just went 
Uh, so I had to duck back to keep getting hit for that with this machine gun, the awful thin planes, you know. And uh, then about the time I was getting ready to try to see how to get over, off again, you know, while the Arizona blew up, while I was waiting while I was there, you know. Did, did you see that? Yeah, I seen it. I seen it blow up. It was blowed up right in my face. I mean, there's the uh, concussion even was hot enough to burn, to be hot enough it burnt your face. Not blister, but burnt, you know. You say you saw the bomb go down? Oh, yeah, I saw it. I, out of the corner of my eye, I seen something fall, see? You know how you'll see something out of the corner of your eye? And just as I turned around like that to look, see what it was, it blew up. The whole ship, the whole inside blew out of it. Did that actually lift the ship up or what? Well, it didn't, no, it just blew up and out like that. It didn't lift the ship up or anything. Well, it might have as far as I know because I couldn't tell it by looking. Of course, it's happened so fast you can't tell anything. Yeah, well, where does that smokestack go? It goes right, to, right down through to the engine room, right down through the deck. Mm -hmm. They claim they dropped, it went right down by, either down the stack or right beside the stack, that armor-piercing bomb. Hit a magazine down there and blew the whole ship up. Had to hit the powder magazine. Mm -hmm. Blew the whole thing out. That's what did it. And what did that sound like? Well, it's just uh, the noise is just deafening, you know. If you're that close to it, they're just uh, it's just uh, just the loudest roar you can think of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Of course, you're that close, of course, according to how, how close you are to it. Mm -hmm. But see, we were just right up in front of them. They were behind us. Yeah. Our berth was here and their berth was there, right behind us. So, what'd you do then? Well, then I finally jumped off. Well, as I was getting off, getting that over the lifeline and getting ready to jump off, why the uh, Commander uh, Kenworthy come walking down the blister. Zach and he was walking down there hollering, banning ship, you know. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> that's all he could think to do, I guess, because it didn't do any good. There wasn't anybody there to band. I didn't see anybody. But uh, anyway, me and him was the last two I seen on the ship, and I got off. And was he the captain? He was the commander. Commander. Mm -hmm. Now, what rank does the commander have? He's under. He's a. He's a under just. He's next in command. Okay. Second in command. And so, did you all walk together? Or? No, I didn't. I, I took off when he was hauling. I just took off, and he was still on there when I left. Mm -hmm. I was afraid that we was going to blow up. See, that's the reason I was just such a big hurry to try to get off of there. Because I thought the other things that happened to us did to Arizona. They hit a magazine while you're, you ain't got a Chinaman's chance. So, where'd you go? I uh, started swimming. I swam up to the Maryland, wasn't it? Inboard of us? Yeah. <coughs> well, I remember it anyway. The Maryland was inboard, and I swam up there and tried to get somebody to take me aboard to help me get up. You know, on, and uh, nobody give me, any, wouldn't pay no attention to me. So I thought, well, I've got to do something. I can't stay here. I was afraid of this ship, our ship might blow. So I took off around swimming around the bow of the Maryland and swam towards Fort Island. And about that time, as I got around about halfway between our ship and the shore, why a motor launch come along, and this old boy was picking us up out of the water, you know. That's what he would been doing, picking guys out of the water. But he stuck his hand out and I grabbed it. And he swung me up aboard the motor launch. What ship is he from? Uh, I don't never didn't know where he where he came from, wh what ship he was from or anything. And uh, because I never did know I didn't know him, it was just that and he was gone and I was gone. And so I never knew who he was. But he swung me up on there and then he shot over towards the shore. Well he could only get Oh, I was far from here to the other side of the road over there to the shore, so he is to be, he, I jumped off and swung the rest of the way in. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got ashore. Mm -hmm. And I was covered with oil. Of course, just as I got ashore, that water started catching on fire, you know, just as I was climbing up, uh, getting out of the water. While they were behind me, I could hear that roar and what that burning that oil off the top of the water. And I just missed that, boy. That, if I'd have been another uh, two minutes, I'd, it, that probably would have burnt me up. Probably I burned that oil would burn me up. So you're on shore. What uniform did you have on? I had on a pair of shorts. We were wearing shorts in that time. Uh, cut off whites below the knees mm -hmm. and a t-shirt. 
and I had shoes on, but I kicked them off so I could swim better, you know. And so I swam ashore. That's what I had on when I swam ashore, a T-shirt and, and shorts. And, of course, they were full of oil and stuff. You couldn't, they were, and I had it all in my hair. Got <laughs> a whole crew dollar wide. Well, I think I might have lost half my hair when I tried to divorce that out. Did you see here. the Oklahoma from where you were? Uh, see it? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. What did you think? When you... Oh, uh, devastating. You know, you just can't believe it. You look at it, but you can't believe it, that that, that, that happened to all them ships along. See, the California, she was sitting down. She settled down on the bottom. She was sitting up in front. And the Arizona was over. The Oklahoma was over. Uh... West Virginia was down. The West Virginia down too? Yeah. I didn't remember her being down. I know, I know yeah. the California it was... settled on the bottom and settled against the Tennessee. she sitting on the bottom? And it settled against the Tennessee. Oh, it did? Yeah. Well, I didn't That's. I didn't remember her doing that. Yeah. I interviewed a guy that was on the <coughs> Tennessee, and he said they had to blow those big keys, you know, where the ships tie up to, those big... Yeah, yeah, things. yeah, burst. They had to blow that away to get the Tennessee out because the West Virginia was had forced the Tennessee up against that key. Oh, I see. Well, you know, I never noticed that. Yeah. Well, well, that was uh, you know a day or so later. Yeah. That. Well, you see, I never know. I never went back over there and messed around there because I've seen enough of that. I didn't. I didn't have any any reason to be back. Over. So. But I did go back to the uh, board the Oklahoma. They detailed me over to show the sh the uh, the sh uh, yardman, navy yardman that worked in the navy yard, how, uh, where to go in the ship, because I knew where. Uh, I didn't know the whole ship, but, now, but I knew were, my part, so they sent me over to help them. Isn't there a salvage in the Oklahoma? That's when they was raising it. Mm -hmm. they, I went over, and we took out uh, the bones and what was left of the men that was de that died there, you know, and stacked them up on the deck. Uh, well, I guess we had bones stacked to the ceiling there, skull bones and knee bones and arm bones <laughs> leg what, bones. What you, tell me about, uh, well, before we get there, uh, so you're on shore now, and what did you do? On shore? Yeah. Well, when I got ashore, well, then uh, I ran across this stable and I was cutting his hair. <laughs> he was, where I got out of the water, he must have just got out ahead of me. And, uh, but I ran across him as we was coming out, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, to try to break the, the spell, you know, the tragedy there, well, I, 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 I don't know why I said it, but I said, hey, stable, a man can get killed around here, could <laughs> Of course, he laughed, and, 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 I, and, and, I, and I laughed, and I, and I, but it was all serious business. This wasn't no fiddling around about trying to make a joke. It just, I just said that, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I went to, uh, I went from there, I started over to the, he went back up towards the, the, uh, oh, the, uh, the uh, mess house, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I went across, uh, I took off for the, Officers' uh, quarters over there, bachelor officers' quarters, mm -hmm. and I took off from there. Well, that flak they was firing at that time, they started finally got an action. We didn't fire a shot, in other words. The Oklahoma did. I think I heard one little three incher go up on the stern, and that and that's all the shot got off one shot before they batted it down us, you know, before we could get an action. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, I was heading for uh, bachelor's officers' quarters, and. Uh, was this uh, where, where on Fort Island? That was on Fort Island. That's where the officers uh, mm -hmm. fly, uh, pilots and all lived over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went over there, and they, uh, this flak was starting to fall into firing, and so they had a pit there where they'd been used for uh, uh, practice shooting, uh, firing a small arm. So I ducked down in there and stayed a little bit uh, afraid of that. That flak, you know, two or three pieces of that flak landed right close to me. Chunks about that, about that long, just as sharp as a razor where they bust, you know, flak. And so I was afraid I'd get hit when I didn't have no helmet or nothing. So the Japanese were still attacking? Oh, yeah. And so I stayed there for a while, for all five or ten minutes, I guess. Then I got out, and when it kind of let up with hair, while well, I took off for, for that. I was trying to get some place to get to find out what to do or get some uh, gun or something. I didn't have nothing, you know. So I got to this officer's quarters over there and that's where I stayed the rest of the day through the day and until uh, till I got assigned to 
of course, I went right on over to the barracks, the main barracks. And so what did you do the rest of the day? The rest of the day? Mm -hmm. Well, we just uh, uh, tried to keep out of uh, the way, you know, really everything you could do. We didn't have no... They finally issued uh, some rifles out, but they wouldn't... That was just like... That didn't make... Wasn't any point in that because we didn't do anything with just a rifle. Mm -hmm. And besides, by that time, by the time that they issued the rifles, why, the aircraft had already made their their first run. The Japs had already made their first run on everything. And uh, then I had another wave come over later, but they didn't do no damage too much to that last wave. I think it was more observation than, than it was attack, the second wave. The, the, I mean, the least wise, they didn't hit us with the second attack. So what, what were your thoughts at that time? Just Oh, well, you know, it's just, you just, you just, it's just so, it's just, uh, you just can't hardly believe that anything like that could happen to you, you know, you just, uh, you're, you're, I don't know how you, you'd explain it, just, if just something happened to it, you just can't believe it could happen to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you just can't believe that they could do that much damage to us. So were you assigned to another ship then? No, I was assigned to, I went into Naval Air. Mm -hmm. From there I went Aviation Ordnance. At uh, Fort Island. Fort Island. Mm -hmm. And what were your duties there? I was uh, I was in the uh, ammunition department at uh, at Bomb. We they issued out to the ships as they'd come in. We'd we'd load them with ammunition and and uh, bombs, and that was our job. Well, we fixed guns, uh, machine guns, and yeah, we had, we worked over in, in the. Uh, NR. What type of airplanes did the Navy have? Well, they had SBDs. That was dive bombers. Mm -hmm. The F-6Fs was the fighter. Mm -hmm. And then they had the torpedo planes. And that's all that the Navy had at that time. Mm -hmm. have you, have you, can, do you want to turn that off? I'll have to go in here to talk. Sure. <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, were you there when they cut the man out of the ship? Out of the I, I was there, but I, I wasn't over there where they yeah. cut him out. I know. I remember when they cut him out. Mm -hmm. That was right after, I think it was about 48 hours later, where they mm -hmm. started cutting. They found out there was some more underneath there that hadn't, they was, uh, had an air pocket in there. They was up, oh, about that far, enough air in there to live. For that. Mm -hmm. And then they cut through. I heard that they cut through one compartment and the gas had formed in there, you know, from, you know, uh, from the oil and stuff yeah. build up. And when they hit through that, Burned through with that cell, uh, that torch. It exploded that uh, down in there and killed uh, the men that were in there. I heard that now, but it's yeah. not true. Uh, that's one of the things I heard anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, when did they start to raise the Oklahoma? Oh, my, let's see. I dang, I can't give dates. Uh, I'd say it was six months or. Three months, six months, something like that. Started then working on Putting the winches over on shore, see? Yeah. Run cables over. Hooked them in and rolled it back this way. Then they went down through and pumped the water out. Stopped the holes up on the outside. And uh, and uh, and then they went down and pumped the water out, of course, when they got it just raised back up. Mm -hmm. What was left of it. Um. So you were involved in the salvage operation or cleaning? Just, just that part that uh, taking the men off. Yeah. I went over there and... Uh, Tell me about that. That was just, uh, uh, well, the, uh, you went down, we went down, see, and then and the, and the bones was laying on the deck after they rolled it over, you know. Of course, there's silt and stuff built up. And they were just laying in there like, some of them were just laying there fully together. But whenever you picked up one, it just fell apart, you know, because they're just laying in this silt. Mm -hmm. And it just, you just picked up bones is what you did. You didn't really get to pick them out. But uh, all the meat was gone. The fish had probably eat all the meat or deteriorated, you know. They're just bones, mostly bones. There's a little, there's a stump, there's still stump, though. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. it, uh, there's enough on there to stink. Uh, what did the inside of the ship look like? 
inside of the upper home. Well, uh, at that time? Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, just mud covered and oil covered and, and uh, well, it wasn't metal silt, oil silt and all that. Just black and dirty, you know, like terrible of it. Yeah. Yeah, it was the, that's, that's the, uh, now the day, the, the day that I went over, they was, they just went to the, see, they hadn't got it all the way up the day they sent me over there. They just had it partly up. And they wanted to know where something, I think it was where the uh, compartment, uh, the my compartment that I was in, my, on the third day. And so I showed them where that was at. And then from then on, all I did was just, just you might say, uh, stood around there and, uh, and if they asked me, which they didn't ask me too much, because they pretty well knew. Were you allowed to go to your compartment? Yeah. Well, no. I, they, I just showed them where it was. See, it wasn't quite ready to go down there yet. You know, they hadn't got it up far enough to. Were you allowed to get anything off the ship? No, I didn't get a thing. I lost everything I had. Didn't have, didn't get a thing on that. Or what I had, I didn't have a whole lot, but then what I did have, I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, so how long did the salvage operation take in taking the bodies? Oh, I'd say it took... Good gosh, it must have been close to nine months or a year or something like that. I don't know, nine months. You know, I really, I didn't, I didn't pay that much attention to it. In fact, it was, I didn't want to... I'd seen all of it I wanted to see anyway, so it didn't... I didn't care whether I've ever seen it. Uh, went back over and looked it over or not because I had too many bad memories. Yeah. What was your <laughs> attitude of picking up the bones? Well, uh, you uh, you think of I wonder if I know this guy, you know, when you're doing that. You think of I wonder if I know who that was, you know. And I, of course, I knew a couple who got killed that I knew that the, the, my, the out of our division. That uh, I looked to see if he had gold teeth. And his skull, to see if it might be one of them, might be him. But uh, you couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. I wasn't that well versed on anything like that. I just, in fact, is I'd seen more than I wanted to see anyway. Yeah. Um. You ever get over that? No. You never get over anything like that completely. Mm -hmm. I uh, I had my uh, I had uh, nervous uh, reactions from that. I still have every once in a while. You know, you think you, you dream or you. You don't, you don't, it's just, I don't think you ever get completely ill, but you always remember and you'll always, uh, the things that you don't want to remember, you know, you try to forget. <laughs> Whenever you hear, or let me ask the question, Pearl Harbor is, how would you answer that? Well, I'd kind of be like, uh, uh, Pearl Harbor was a, was uh, kind of like Roosevelt said, uh, a day of infamy, mm -hmm. which is, is, is described about as well as anybody could think to describe it. And if you think of the Oklahoma, oh, the yeah. way you think of a lost home, <laughs> really. Mm -hmm. You know, you think of all the friends you had there, you know, and all your buddies, the ones that were killed, of course. And you, and that's what you remember. And you think of the good times you had while you're always on there, you know. What are some of the good times you had? Would you? Oh well, the good times is just the the best times was getting getting into port and then getting to go to shore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the best part. Get her run around over shore, you know, and have fun, you know, go to dances and, mm -hmm. and just like just like anybody would be if they lived here in the car. These go up to a dance on Saturday night, you know. That's the way it just about the same thing. Do you remember the date that you went aboard the Oklahoma? The day, yeah, I remember the day I went aboard, yeah, and I'll well, never forget that. Okay. Do you remember the date? I don't remember the date. It was in, uh, I believe it was, I believe it was right in the middle of May or maybe a little later in May that I went aboard mm -hmm. in 40. Don't know the date. What's your fondest memory of the Oklahoma? Oh, well, I can't. I don't know. It just, it just, I, I just uh, fondest. I don't know if I have any just any certain uh, memory of. It's just uh, kind of a, like a home to you. You know, you, 
that's what it really becomes. It's just, just a pleasant feeling towards the Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what you do in VJ Day? Uh, VJ Day. Mm -hmm. Well, VJ Day was, uh, see, now I got discharged, I got discharged in, uh, just before the, the, or just before the Japs fell, mm -hmm. I got discharged. See, I'd been in there and I went in in 40, see, and I got, they had uh, points, you know, give you out points. So I got out a little bit ahead of the other guys, or some of the other guys, but, uh, but it was right at, right at, just before J, VJ Day. Mm -hmm. Did you celebrate BJ? Day? Oh yeah, well, down back. I see. I'd got back home by that time. Mm -hmm. Were you in Carthage? Yeah, but when the Japs fell over there, oh, well, that was a great film. <laughs> What'd you do that day? Oh my, I got drunk, I think. <laughs> and run around there, run around all day and all night, and <laughs> and now everybody else was doing the same thing. Everybody was jubilant, you know, boy. That was, that was the best day that ever, uh, ever, ever happened to us. <laughs> Anything else about the Oklahoma you can think of? Uh, no, I can't. Uh, only just I can't think of any anything anything offhand. It's uh, kind of hard to remember all the things, you know. It's, you mm -hmm. you have different memories, and they, you think of them, and then they leave, and then you automatically think of them again. But right now, I can't think of anything else that uh, can't think of anything unless somebody would ask or something that I can relate to. But I can't, that's about the... Can you recall, I think he told me when uh, you first saw her, heard the bomb drop. Yeah. Explode. Yeah. What if you meant on our ship? Uh, on Ford's Island on Ford and Island. on ship. Both well, that, that was all uh, a mystery. I mean, it's just like, just like me and you're sitting here and, and out of a blue sky, everything explodes. That's the way it is. That's the way the feeling is. You didn't have any warning of nothing, but it just all at once happened, and that's the way. That's the only thing that I could really say. How both, how far below the main deck was your uh, battle station? The second deck. And how far down is that? One deck below. One deck below. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really the the the, the second deck. The uh, where the it's still above water. It's on the water line. Mm -hmm. See? The third deck is below the water line. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is right. See right right there where that portholes are? Yep. That's your second deck. Okay. And this is the main deck aft over here, see? Right here. Main deck aft. That's where I was did my uh, this is where I did my uh, when I was a, a seaman, and done my seamanship right back here on this back part right here. Mm -hmm. And then, then, of course, on the signal, and I went up here on the signal bridge right here. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that was a great ship. Yeah. Well, Anything else about Pearl Harbor or the Oklahoma? Well, I can't think. I see. You know, we have an anchor on display in Oklahoma City. Do you? Yeah. That came off the Oklahoma? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boy, that's a big wreck, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and also, we have one of the emergency steering wheels. Oh, do you? Yeah. That came off the ship. Yeah. And uh, that was down below, I guess, on the main drive shaft, I guess. Yeah. They said that's the case if the bridge is knocked out, I think he's at the ship. Yeah, steer it. Instead of electric, it's just a direct. Yeah, direct steering. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's that, right. That's a big wheel, too. Oh, you might, yeah, I'm about to tell you. And that, uh, that's a, and you, you, you've seen that, why well, the, the uh, drive shaft on that, the oh, solid yeah. steel that big around, you know, to run that one, one prop. How big are those screws on that thing? Oh my goodness, that thing must be six foot. Uh, man, I'd say they're taller than a man. Each screw. Mm -hmm. There's three. There's three uh, mm -hmm. propellers on the, yeah. each shaft. Mm -hmm. I mean each screw. Hmm. 
and, and boy, it's just, and it took, but my gosh, that 30,000 ton uh, of steel going through the water took something to push that. See, our, and we, uh, uh, I think it was 15 knots, is about as fast as we could go, full mm -hmm. speed. That's, so, and the miles, it'd be a mile and a quarter. Yeah. And not. Mm -hmm. So, what have you done since you left well, the Navy? Well, since I, well, I went to, uh, I worked in the automobile for two years after that up at mm -hmm. Flint. And then I came back here in 48 and went to school in Kansas City to barber school. Mm -hmm. And then I barbered up here uh, in Carthage. From then on, until mm -hmm. up till I retired a year ago, oh, year and a half. Yeah, I was going to ask. He said that you thought you heard one shot fired off the Oklahoma. Uh, one shot's all I ever heard. And it was from a three inch. Sounded like a three inch. I don't. I couldn't say because I'm just going by sound. You know? Yeah. But it sounded sharp. See there, I got a real sharp report than three inches. And lower down, the bigger you get, the more wound you get to. Yeah. The smaller you get down, the more pop you get to, you know. What are those three inches used for? Uh, three inch? Mm -hmm. uh, they're not a three inch. I don't see. Is this three inch? Three inch or five inch? It's three inch. That little, this is small, like 37 millimeters. Okay. Yeah. Know. And uh, five inch is used for broadside firing, like firing into another ship or firing into, uh, that's your the six inch and five inch, any aircraft. They got five inch air and the aircraft. Now, where, where the three inch guns located on them? Well, they was just uh, they was oh, I, they were just more of a, a, a movable gun. I, I don't. They weren't stationary the way I remember. They were a real light gun. They they would only be used against personnel if you got close enough to fire. Uh, the ship would be on board another ship. So we got ship. one shot off and that's it. That's one on the liver. That well, they never did he get to the, the lockers were never open. Never did have the time to open up the ready lock. Shoot, I'll tell you. Oh, that that was a devastating thing. And didn't have a chance. We just like shooting fish in a rain barrel. They, the way they had us there, you know. Mm -hmm. Why they ever pulled all the ships in there in the first place is beyond my imagination. Why they ever got us hemmed in there? They shouldn't. The annual military inspection is why we was in there. It is. Yeah. Took us in there. Why bring all the ships in at one time? Why not inspect them in in the small groups, you know, mm -hmm. where you wouldn't have the whole fleet bottled up in one harbor? How often is that an annual inspection? Annual yeah, military inspection. Annual military. Mm -hmm. They have once a year, you know. It's all. Was it in December normally? Yeah, December. Well, I, I, I suppose that. See, I, like I say, I, I, when I I hadn't been from. My, May till December 7th was, uh, I'd say, was uh, I was practically a recruit on that new new hand. So see, there's a lot of things that I hadn't fully developed yet. <laughs> kind of have a green on. <laughs> well, I think we have a good interview. Yeah, I've enjoyed talking to you. Yeah. And I'm glad to help you. If there's anything I can that I did that could help you. Well, we want to save the history of the Oklahoma. That's the thing, yeah. I hope that people don't forget these things, you know. That's now, that's our goal. Yeah. Preserving. Because that's uh, now that was that was a very Oklahoma. I think they should be proud of that ship. I mean, uh, they should yeah. be proud of it. Because mm -hmm. named after them. Yep. That's our travel around interview and we yeah, should like to yeah. use that word. That's that's nice, and yeah. that'll and that and and go down for history for people for kids that come after, you know, to know yeah. what happened. That's right. You know? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. I sure appreciate it.